Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at the next example. And at first sight, that looks a little scary because the numerical factors are pretty big. Also notice that each term contains an x. So that means I can at least factor an x. And it, note, it looks like every number here is also divisible by 3, so I can also factor out a 3. So let's do that first to simplify it. So this is equal to 3x as a common factor times 15x squared minus 17x minus 4. And so now it comes down to factoring the remaining trinomial here. So there's a couple ways we could do that. Let's try our first way where we're going to write this as, this, as four terms instead of three terms. So this is equal to 3x times 15x squared and minus 4. And then I need to add two middle terms that will add up to the minus 17x. So I need an x here, I need an x there. But what goes in front of that, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for two numbers. It is such that the product of the two numbers will equal the product of these two. So the product will be 15 times negative 4, which is minus 60. The sum will have to be equal to the negative 17 here. So we're looking for two numbers. When you multiply, we get negative 60. And when we add the two together, you get negative 17. So one must be positive, one must be negative, and the bigger one must be negative. And they must differ by, let's see here, well, we can try minus 18 times a positive 1. When I add that together, I get negative 17, but that doesn't add up to minus 60. It adds up to minus 18. If I, um, or multiply is minus 18. If I try minus 19 times 2, that is minus 38, still not minus 60. If I try minus 20 times 3, well, that adds up to 17, when I, negative 17, but when I multiply, I get minus 60. So that means that is the combination that will work for me. Remember, I was looking for two numbers. When I add them together, I get negative 17. When I multiply, I get negative 60. So that means I'm going to put here the minus 20x, and over here, I'm going to put the plus 3x. Now I'm ready to go ahead and try to factor that. Let's get rid of these. What we must do now is group them together two by two. So I'm going to group the first two together, group the next two together. When I do that, I get the following, 3x times. Here I can factor out a 5x, and I have left 3x minus 4. And here I can factor out just a plus 1, and I get a 3x minus 4. And notice, I now have two terms that contain the exact same factor, 3x minus 4, so I can factor out that one. So this becomes 3x times 3x minus 4, and I have left a 5x plus 1. And this is the factored form of my original equation. You might say, well, I like the FOIL method better. Well, let's try the FOIL method over here. On the left side, I'm going to put all the combinations that give me a 15. So that could be 15 and 1, that could be 5 and 3, that could be 3 and 5, or 1 and 15. Next on the right side, I'm going to put all the combinations that can give me a negative 4. So negative 4, that would be a minus 4 and a 1, or a um, minus 2 and a 2, or a minus 1 and a 4. So those are all the combinations. I don't have to flip the signs because I have all the combinations here ready for the left side. Okay, now let's see which combination will give us the correct middle term. Remember, I'm looking for the correct middle term and I lose, use the FOIL method. So I'm going to multiply the 15 times 1, that gives me plus 15, and the 1 times the negative 4, that gives minus 4, which is a positive 11. Notice that does not give me the negative 17. Well, the next one would be 5 times, or yeah, 5 times 2, which is 10, and 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. That gives me minus 2. Again, that doesn't give me the right combination. Try 3 and, so 3 times 1, that gives me 3, and 5 times negative 4 gives me minus 20. Well, that gives me a negative 17, and that is bingo. 
the right number right here. I'm looking for negative 17. So the correct combination was the 3 and 5 and the negative 4 and positive 1. So that I can then use to write up my solution. Of course, don't forget the 3x. So this is equal to 3x times, and here we have 3 times x minus 4 times 5 times x times plus 1, like this. And notice I have the exact same result as I did over there using the other method. So again, it comes down to which method you prefer, the one we did on the right or the foil method. I think most people probably like the foil method, although I like the other method as well. And that is how it's done. Hey, my wife actually likes this one better. That's why she keeps pushing me to always show you how to use the foil method because she thinks that's the easiest way to do it. You be the judge. This is how it's done. Ha, ha, ha.